guys, I'm starting out this roof repair with getting all the accessories and things off the roof. Vents, vent caps, uh, this 50 foot long um, reverse camera RCA cable. Definitely not gonna do it this the same way when I put it back in. I'll run the wires inside like I do everything else. I don't think I'm expecting the RV to last this long. This was a bit of a quick job. Camera's off. Now let's take off these rails. I think I will even leave these off. They're only used for the ladder, which is... I'm deciding whether or not that's just a convenience or really necessary. I can if I have to get on the roof by climbing up my driver door with the window down. I think. I mean, if I really have to, I know I can get up here. And I'll eventually have a ladder at some point. So yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and take these off and leave them off. They are screwed right to the surface here, so they've gotta come. It's gonna be a lot of peeling and slicing. rotten here so I don't even need to bother taking the screws out I don't think. Look at that. That's bad. Peeling up the stuff to get to the screw heads and I can't get to this screw head without the barb being removed. That gave me that uh, gave me a realization that this these bars probably disassemble first and then you take the brackets off. See, this is interesting. Okay, there's like a little a couple things here. So remove these pieces, the screws. There's a seam right here at this pipe. Screws. like a two-piece thing here so that comes off that can slide out you got a two-piece over here and then if you get that seam to separate the screw is stuck and you can take this all apart piece by piece
Boy, this didn't come off easy. All right, yeah, that doesn't seem so bad. Just got some screws along the top, pull off the side caps, and then uh, start pulling these sheets. Okay, the back's done. Driver's side is done. comes off so much easier when it's like 100 degrees out how to use the hammer and chisel away at the side but uh, still got it done all the screws are exposed might not be necessary in your case to remove all the lap sealant this stuff was just pretty built up and I want to have a nice clean surface for the next application of it also some weird uh, some really hard stuff that really reminds me of GB weld but there's a whole bunch of it it's got the same consistency and the same color Unscrewed, I think. It's really hard. 
there's that JB Weld stuff again in all the almost all the screw heads. tape underneath there it looks like. Let's go around and kind of separate it. Warm weather is actually very helpful for this stuff. This is really hard to work with when it's cold. It wasn't even that cold this morning. down on, to, on it. it seems like it's clipped in there is a curled edge there oh, thankfully there's only four of these three more to go show you what we got here Hey, look at that. So there's my wall. Got the little corner bracket there. Rusted screws. Looks sharp. I'm tired of getting cut on this project. Alright, let's get the let's get the rest of these off, see what we got. Just took down the third rail. This side is completely off. It's starting to look like a war zone up here. I don't I, I I thought the worst part was gonna be these thought the worst part was going to be these screws but boy this these things are wearing me out just sitting here just stabbing away this old I'm assuming this is butyl tape but it has the consist consistency of like old chewing gum so we're on the third day and thankfully the weather is a lot cooler I love it it was so hard to work the past couple days because the temperature is so high, I had to keep going in. And for breaks, I was dripping sweat, absolutely soaked all my clothes. And I was feeling, yeah, uh, getting a little dizzy. So I had to take many breaks. Oh boy, that's a bad spot. Five years of apartment maintenance that helped me kind of brace for this roof job but boy this is nothing like anything I've ever done before this is totally new territory to me I'll 
drop it down. Okay, now it's time for a little cleanup. I'm gonna grab all these screws and keep a couple set aside to grab uh, some new ones at the hardware store. Bring them in to match them up. Every single screw has been removed. Should help get this aluminum up. up here at the fiberglass and up tearing it but it's already in a spot where it's kind of damaged so I'll make another patch and thin eighth inch material I'm gonna go 
probably some quarter inch. Looks like that'll slide right up under there, hopefully. This stuff doesn't really seem to go bad. So we won't have too much of this to replace, I don't think. Just in the back. All this. All this stuff is done. Where do I even begin? Probably at the backwards first. Oh. You clear this off so I can see the, uh, the steel beams. I don't know where to walk. I hope this isn't important, like structural. So where's my steel beams? Yeah, There's one. Okay, these are like spacers or something. Big a deal. Jesus. This is gnarly. It goes right into my bathroom a little bit. I see daylight in there now. Yeah, that'd be the interior wall panel. Uh, ceiling panel. Okay, so let's just.
stripped down, cleaned up for the most part. Got to do uh, some reshaping of the roof. And I think the only way really to do that is to brace it from inside. Got light shining in everywhere now. That's not good. Cabinets come separated from the wall. It's now pulling down on the roof. On the ceiling. I was going to remount this. Just put like an L bracket down here. But there's no stud. It would just be going into wood and that's just slowly going to pull the screws out again. So I'm just going to take down the whole cabinet. Okay, now I can brace these saggy parts in the middle sections between the beams without a bunch of extra weight pulling down on it. Keep it that way. Just gonna give it a push, brace it up with some boards. So I'm busting holes in my wall because I want to make sure I can access these vent tubes because I want to cut them and relocate them out the side of the RV. I don't see why I can't do that. They probably put them as high as they can for smell, but I tell you what, if the tank's gonna stink, it's gonna stink and you're gonna smell it. There's really no getting around it, so uh, I'm gonna put them on the side. If there's any issue with water getting in, I'll just put a little gutter and then I can have a roof with absolutely no holes in it. Might even find some way to attach the solar with large pads and uh, sealant. We'll see, but uh, there's the uh, gray tank vent. I'm gonna snip it and put an elbow in. Fridge has been moved. Give me a chance to seal this part too. While I'm in town, I need to take a trip and get some parts. And that'll be the black tank vent. Same thing, snip it. Just gonna route it outside. some parts all right the vents have been rerouted rerouted and secured put a coupler or a union whatever that's called for easy removal if I need to it also allows for some flexibility while I'm driving All right, let's put this fridge back in here so I can open it. I'm starving. Wanted my food to box. I was going to get me some more of this insulation. Give me another insulation panel and fill that in, but I think I'll just be lazy and get some of uh, this in, uh, gap filler. Just fill that in. Plumbing, I think, or building materials.
There's some insulation looking stuff. There's nothing I like more than parking in the parking lot and doing work right at a hardware store. Everything is walking distance. Look for the cans. The coking. Mm, the wood smells good. Oh yeah. What are we getting into later? Huh? Top choice. Guess I got some shopping to do for the wood. Don't need no maple, I don't think. Get close. Okay, microwave is unplugged and it's coming out now too. I just uh, gave this a good jiggle and sure enough, even this cabinet is coming off the wall and pulling down on the ceiling. And the big old gap from bouncing around over the years. And Ah, oh, that's the trick. You rip up the bottom and then you can get to the screws on the inside. All right, that made things a heck of a lot easier. I'm gonna have to remember that little trick. This roof repair is turning into craziness. I can't help it though. These are, these are all warped and falling apart. Alright, you got this roof all braced up and getting that curve back in the areas where it's sagging down, which is pretty much the whole RV. Alright, got these two rotted sections replaced with a 2x4 that has a 1 inch by 3 quarter inch notch cut into it with the table saw. Okay, next step I think I want to tackle is filling in all the gaps. Even the original factory installation with these panels has uh, quite a few gaps in it. A lot of weird random stuff too. I think I'm going to go ahead and hit all the exposed metal with some primer. Just to help it out a little bit. We'll get all the screw heads too. Just since some of the older ones are rusting out. They've also wiggled out a little bit, so I'm also going to cinch those down. 
they are not loose they cinch you down and stay pretty tight they just have uh well either weren't put in all the way or they've just come out a little bit I don't know what these are supposed to be for. I assume they're just 12 volts from, uh, for lighting. I guess there's two other options for lighting in the bedroom. I'm gonna go ahead and drill a hole and drop these down because you never know. They're, uh, they're all crimped up and ready to go. But they're just kind of looped up and tucked in there so yeah, I might want to use those later, so I'll just drill a hole right where these two spots are. Um, if these are going to that light connection, then that means these are switched. There's actually a wall switch for these. Got these uh, holes sealed up on the interior. Just for now, so the uh, new insulation panels are what I'm using to fill in. This hole has something to rest against. Later on, I will cut this down, or I'll, I'll take this down and then cut out this acoustic layer um, on the ceiling and then seal this right to the wood panels. That way, this is permanent. But for right now, I'm um, just focusing on the roof. We'll come back and do the interior walls at a later time. Okay, I got a new toy to try out today. Got some great stuff Pro Series construction adhesive, along with their. Pro Series applicator gun. I'm uh, going to be using this first to re-stick some of this hard insulation foam panel. And uh, let's see how it works on there. That is nice. I like this thing. Very cool. All right, so we're gonna go stick all the insulation back up and then we'll get the panels on. Okay, this has set overnight. Been about 12 hours and that is rock hard, I like it. I was going to go with the old Henry Solar Flex made with latex, but this stuff's looking a little better. They also have a, one that's a 12 year limited warranty and that is Henry's EnviroCool or something like that. It's also 100% acrylic but it's got some extra things in it um and then there's 100 percent silicone and that was like 300 dollars silicone is to put it on once and that's it this i can recoat so if there's ever an accident with a branch tearing a hole in my roof i can recoat easier with this than i can with silicone it's also way cheaper if i could afford the silicone i might have done that but uh, yeah, if I ever get a tree branch scraping up the roof, then uh, it's gonna be a little harder to fix. I like the Henry's, it's repaintable. It's done very good in the past on other patches. This is the uh, latex, which is water based. I believe that's a seven year warranty. The acrylic is uh, chemical based and it's got a 10 year warranty. So it should last a little longer. We also got 10 sheets of this. They had this for around 20 bucks, 21 bucks or something like that, a sheet, and then some qu actual quarter inch. And that was $74 a sheet, holy crap. So yeah, I just went with the cheaper stuff. It looks pretty nice to me. Um, get up there and see how good it does. Doing some final adjustments in here, and I thought I'd show you guys a little something I just discovered as I was chopping away the strip. This panel came loose when I took a quick drive 
and uh, twisted this connecting middle piece, this little strip here in the middle. And it turns out it's a two piece. So if you're ever working on your RV and you have these things, that is a two piece that clips together. That would have been good to know before I chopped half of that out of there. This whole panel is rotted, so it's really floppy. I need some extra support. I got like a clamp right here kind of pinning that up. I got a shower rod. And for cutting flat the insulation panels or insulation foam that sticks up too high, I got this tuck pointer. I couldn't really figure out if there's a knife or not that's like this. This is kind of what I wanted. Uh, it was like a flat knife that I can, you know, cut along the surface. So, uh, it's just a piece of steel. I'm going to sharpen one edge and use that to cut the foam. Because i got a lot of holes to fill up. I'm going to use that gap filler. Got the Pro Series. Gaps and cracks. I also picked up another and that way I could have one being used for adhesive and one for applying foam just in case I need to fix something or touch something up but it's gonna be a lot better if I don't have to switch out between stuff as I'm working and I got a backup gun just in case something goes wrong what three quarters of a can does. That works awesome. I don't know if they actually make a knife like this. I tried Googling it, flat knife or something. I was going to get a, a pie knife and then sharpen that, but then I saw this at the Home Depot. Thought that would work better, and boy. Works awesome. few of these 
mixed up because these are a little taller in places so they need to be trimmed down. I'm going to get the roof as flat as possible by trimming. Uh, and we'll be pretty much good to go at that point to put down the panels. spots with this little adapter. That little thing is super helpful. I was able to get a lot more filled in the smaller cracks and that was uh, actually avoiding filling too many of the cracks because I didn't know how much this expanded. This doesn't expand too much, it's really nice. I was afraid it was going to be the, like that high expanding stuff that kind of breaks, break your wall, it foams up so good. So yeah, that is a, uh, that was money well spent, I'm happy with that. I even was able to take it off, clean up the tip, and then use it the next day. Um, so yeah, one whole can got all, almost all the seams on that roof. Just some tiny seams left. That don't really, it's not really the biggest deal. Ready for the next repair. All right, let's let that dry one more day and we'll come back and finish cutting. Okay, I found a better spot for the RV. I forgot this driveway is horribly uneven. These boards need to be cut down to 90 and a half inches. So I'll make some marks. I'm trying to figure out how to get these panels up and secured um, without being able to walk on that roof. Without that top layer, those insulation panels are very weak. And uh, at some spots, I'd probably fall right through. 
So I'm cutting these boards down to the 90 and a half inches that they need to be. And I figured if I could put one up here to kneel on, that helps out, uh, that helps me get up on the roof. If you have uh, another person that can help you out, this would go a much easier as a two-person job. So I'm, uh, you know, getting the boards up here, lining the first board I got up there, lined it up and just taking a look at it and seeing how I like it and how everything lines up. Um, once I've decided it looks good, I'm throwing on that adhesive, um, about a one inch to two inch bead spacing every two inches, putting it on, um, as thick as I can, cause I know it's going to need it. I lined that board up with the top of the board I'm kneeling on and just dropped it down. That helped me line things up without being able to see around it or without having a second pair of hands. Then I am pre-drilling, I am counter seeking and I am uh, screwing down the panel. Look at that, fresh wood. So I don't know where the uh, time lapse cut off, but I countersunk, fastened everything on the edges here, going every, I don't know, just kind of using my hand as a spacer, pre-drilling, countersinking, using these wood screws, copious amounts of the adhesive it's the rain's on the way and I was kind of stressing and rushing things and so I forgot my work gloves. Now I'm covered in this adhesive crap that is going to take weeks to come off. Got me a pretty good gash there too. I'm not even sure what from. Uh, I just looked down and I noticed it. Using a bunch of oddball things here to add weight to these seams. They were all pretty darn close. The biggest gap was maybe an eighth of an inch but they're all right around a sixteenth of an inch, I think, ish. On the bigger gaps, I'm adding a little weight to get these flush. I'm not too worried about it. The roof was so uneven to begin with. I'm surprised at how well this actually turned out. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with that. I'm gonna let that sit overnight and cure. Let all that adhesive get hard. Getting some shiny fresh beads of lap sealant put down. And uh, once this is secured, I'm going to put another layer of um, Eternal Bond over that. This black stuff, I don't know what it is, but it's so freaking nasty. I tried cleaning it up. I'm just going to put some butyl tape over it. it. Seems to be sticking good enough to it. Get the front termination strip back on. That was the one. Just 
putting a few screws here to fix that tear. One of them hit the uh, Romex below. Shorted out like six of my outlets. So let's just take one of them out. And uh, that, that fixed it. I was originally going to just leave it because there's so many screws up there you never know which one hit it but my battery backups are beeping a little after uh, my last few screws I put up there and so I kind of remembered when about when I started beeping. Let this lap sealant uh, cure for a full 24 hours so I can firm up. And now I'm going around scraping off. I just tried putting up one of these corner caps that wouldn't go on and realized there's a bunch of, uh, okay, it feels like old butyl tape underneath the lip here. So I gotta scrape all this out before I can put these corner caps back on. All right, so the corner caps are put back on. Went pretty smooth. Next step will be going around and picking off all the loose stuff and then wiping down with some paint cleaner or paint, some, something to prep the surface with. And then we'll put some Eterna Bond over the seams. Going around scraping off any loose chunks or anything the uh, Eterna Bond might not stick to. And then I'm going to wipe it down with some rubbing alcohol. Make sure everything sticks good.
Finally, ready for paint. A little creaky in some spots, but boy, that's amazing. I thought I'd never see a, such a solid roof on patches. coat on going this way and now I'm putting on a coat from the ladder going sideways and it's a little easier just to bring up a gallon of paint and dump it on the roof and spread it around it's so thick it's a little thicker than the uh, latex stuff but that'll be the third coat right there all right you guys there it is Th uh, four coats got one light coat to begin with Put it on nice and even and then the last three coats uh, went on pretty thick. Using the roller pan on the first one and on the last three started pouring it on the roof and spreading it around. The wires and screw holes for the cable for the video going back to the reverse camera have been sealed. That sealed. I'm just put some caps on. Um, I'm going to file a little notch to allow for drainage before I put these up, just because these might sit flat enough to keep it. I don't want this uh, holding any water in there. It's gonna be bad for the wall. Pre-drilled. Put the cap or the bottom part on, and you can put this part on. Got some of these fancy boys. The built in washer, pretty cool. They set it up there, so I'm gonna give that one more day to cure. And uh, maybe I yeah, put up one more coat. Maybe a total of five coats. All right, there's uh, the gray tank vent. All right, kind of funky looking, but hey, at least that's not on my roof. No holes on my roof. I uh, didn't think I was gonna do that, but once I got the idea in my head, I, I had to do it. I loved the idea of just not having to cut any more holes. Even the solar panel will get glued up there instead of screwed down. When I'm ready to do that, I also recalked that vent because the cheap, like $2 caulking is complete crap. It didn't even, didn't even last one season. It's already cracking and splitting. So I recalked that with the quad. These vent caps are caulked all the way around except for at the bottom. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna let the hot weather dry that roof just a little bit more it's pretty much dry it's just a little still just a little fresh so I'll probably get one more coat on there and call it good Alright, 
Fifth coat. Fifth coat and still have a little extra left over for touch-ups, just barely. Five gallons, that's five coats, give or take. Okay, and I think the next project might be fixing this back cap. Yeah, push that back on there and secure it somehow. It'll stay put long enough for me to get to town. Stay tuned, you guys. We've got lots coming up. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.